What you say becomes your reality. Boop, boop. Okay, so that was my internal alarm. I said, I'm klutzy and I'm clumsy. And I'm like, oh damn, I'm literally doing it right now. What you say becomes your reality, y'all. Hi guys, welcome to another conversation, another hangout. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so grateful that you guys wanna spend some time together, whether you are watching this video or listening to the podcast. I'm grateful that you're here. And I know I say this every single episode, but I am very genuinely excited to have this conversation with you today because I feel like the universe is nudging this one. I feel like God keeps like tapping me on the shoulder and being like, Psst, you should talk about this. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have had a handful of experiences lately where I had an instinct to go over and speak with strangers that I heard talking. I, I just wanted to go over there and be like, oh my gosh, do you understand that you are, that this is a self-fulfilling prophecy, that you are creating this moment, that you are making this worse, but I didn't know these people and so it would obviously be inappropriate to do that. So instead, I'm going to turn it into an episode is basically what's going to happen today. Yeah, that that's that's it. Um, I do. I first want to this is silly or dumb, but I want to acknowledge this kimono that I'm wearing because it's such a cool story and because I feel like it's a good lesson for all of us today. Years ago, we were looking for a house in L.A. and we had had a lot of luck with finding houses in good neighborhoods but the house was like a disaster and we would take on a multi-year construction project and we would live in the house while the construction was going on which I do not recommend if you can help it but we couldn't afford anything else so we just like live there and slowly make the house great and there was one house where we bought it from the adult children of the couple who had lived there and the couple who had lived there were the second owners. This house was built in 1938. But the people that lived there were the second owners. So it had stayed with this couple for so many years. And when I walked through in the final inspection, I opened one of the closets and there was a closet filled with vintage clothes. And I died. Like I love vintage, I, I love vintage everything, but certainly vintage clothes. I used to have a, when I was a blogger, I used to have a hashtag called something like Rach loves vintage. And it would just be whenever I wore vintage. So I opened this closet and I'm like dying. I said to the, you know, our real estate agent, oh my gosh, they left this closet filled with clothes. And clearly these had been this woman who lived here for 40 years. Like these were her clothes and did the kids want them back? And the kids were like, oh, if you will, you know, if you want them, you can have them. And I was like, holy crap, because there were like amazing dresses and like skirts and and this Japanese vintage kimono. If you can't see it, guys, it's just it's a dream. It's like a bright red. It's beautiful silk. It goes all the way to my ankles and all these clothes. I like I still have them. I gathered them up. I would wear them. But this particular piece I never wear. It hangs in my closet and I never wear it because it's silk and because it's delicate and I'm afraid I'm going to hurt it and I'm pretty klutzy and I'm pretty clumsy and I was just like, oh, I, you know, I, I'm for sure going to spill something on this and so I don't wear it. And today I wanted to make this podcast episode for y'all and I'm just still in my workout clothes. I'm not going to lie. I did not take a shower today. I washed my face, put a little makeup on for you. <laughs> And that was the full extent of what I was going to do for our hangout. But I was in my closet and I saw this and I was like, I never wear that. I never wear that because I'm afraid of it getting hurt. And so therefore it's just wasted. And it's crazy because I don't live my life this way. Like I use the good china on a Tuesday and I have this um, vintage coffee like percolator that was my grandpa's. It's probably the most sacred thing that I own and it's fully glass I don't know if you guys know those like old school little like coffee pot things I use it every day of my life and I have for 20 years and every time I'm like oh god if I break this I'm going to be devastated but at the same time every time I use it I think of my grandpa and I want to like utilize stuff and so I saw this and I was like you know what I'm gonna wear that kimono for the guys, for whoever managed to see this episode, 
just because it's red and it's pretty and I thought, why not? So I just thought that was a good reminder today. Use the stuff. Wear the nice heels. Like if not now, then when? Have I had experience after experience after experience that reminds me that tomorrow is not guaranteed? This is it. This day, this is all we have. So if this is all we have, let's wear the thing. Let's say the thing. Let's enjoy the moment to the fullest that we're capable of because we don't know when there are no more moments. Let me start with what we're going to talk about today. What is blocking the thing you want to manifest? Now, I'm going to assume that if you are hanging out with me, you know about manifesting. You are familiar with the law of attraction. You believe in intention. You believe in the energy that we put out into the world. But if let's say you just happened upon here and you've never heard of that in your entire life, I got an episode for you. In fact, I have a lot of episodes on this topic. The most popular, the most extensive one I did a year and a half ago maybe called Manifesting 101. It was my journey of understanding the law of attraction, how we manifest. To be honest, I grew up in a faith that would have called that having faith in God and having intentionality in your actions. So I think a lot of different religions and a lot of different ideologies are all kind of saying the same thing and calling it different names. But if you want to hear the full like soup to nuts, everything that I could possibly tell you about it, it is Manifesting 101. It is a two-part episode and it starts with episode 227. So you could scroll back, you can listen to all the things, take a deeper dive. But let's assume that you already know all about that stuff. And let's assume because, you know, we like, we like a goal, right? We're hanging out here. We like a goal. We have a vision. Even if you're new to this kind of thinking, whether it's a personal goal, professional goal, you're working on your heart, you're working on your cooking, you're working on guitar, you want to take better pictures. Like it doesn't matter what it is. I believe that most people come into this sphere so that we can all hang out together so we can talk about how do we become a better version of ourselves. And that looks like how do I manifest more abundance in my life? How do I live in a place of, you know, truly having faith that everything's going to turn out okay, that I am being guided, that, you know, the universe has my back, as Gabby Bernstein likes to say, like that all of these things are sort of clicking and lining up. So let's assume that you know what manifesting is and you are trying to manifest something and it's just not happening. Let's talk about why. Today I want to talk about five reasons why you are not manifesting the thing you want. Five reasons why you might be unintentionally blocking the blessing. You might be blocking the thing that's coming. You're trying to manifest the woman of your dreams and it's just not happening. You're trying to manifest that great new job and it's just not happening. And you're like, wait, I'm doing all the things, right? I'm listening to the meditations and I'm watching the YouTube videos and I'm reading the books and I'm doing it all and I just can't seem to attract this. Why? That's what I want to talk about today. So let's start with the beginning. There were two specific conversations that I have heard lately that I felt like the universe was like elbowing me and going like, talk about this, talk about this. So the first one was, I took my kids to get manicures. All the kids, the whole kit and caboodle, me rolling into the nail salon with four children in tow. We do this, I'm not gonna say every month, but I maybe every other month, It'll be like, hey, y'all want to go get a manicure? You guys want to go get pedicures? I'm not going to lie. It's something to do. It's something to do when I am at home on a weekend with four kids by myself. And oh my gosh, it's so many hours till bedtime. And everybody enjoys it. Who doesn't like a pedicure? Who doesn't like a manicure? And so I'm like, hey, you guys want to go to the nail salon? So everyone's like, yep, we all rally together. We go to the nail salon. We're in various parts of this nail salon, this small little local place, and they've put us kind of all over the shop. But there's a group of women who are chatting, and one of them, you, we all know that person who's talking so loud, you have a 0% chance of not listening to what's going on. Now, normally, I love to go to the nail salon and listen to a podcast or some music, but in this instance, I had my daughter with me, and she was getting her toes done, and she wanted to watch there's this cartoon that's like a shark and a mermaid and a weasel. 
Do you guys know this? Like Sharko and someone, there are no words in this cartoon. As far as I can tell, a weasel, is it a weasel? He's trying to eat a mermaid. This sounds crazy. If you've never seen this, this sounds like a fever dream. But the weasel's trying to eat the mermaid. The shark's trying to protect the mermaid. I can't tell if the shark's protecting the mermaid because they're a couple or because they're friends or because he just hates the weasel. I don't know what's going on. There's no dialogue. It's just like weird sounds and this cartoon. My daughter lives for it. She loves it. So she's at the nail salon watching that on my phone. I can't help but overhear this woman's conversation. There's two women and they are talking about their kids are going to college. And it was just like a case study in an abundance mindset and a scarcity mindset. So the abundance mindset came from a woman whose child was already at college. They had had a year at college. They were going into their sophomore year at college. The scarcity mindset was the woman whose child was going into their freshman year of college. And if I told you on paper, all of the things that were happening in this woman's life, like her kid had gotten into an incredible school, like his dream school, he was so pumped, he was so excited. She told the other woman, his whole high school career, this is all he's wanted to do. He's so excited he got into this school. He's their oldest. He got like a scholarship. They will only have to pay part of it. Like on paper, this is all amazing news. But to hear this woman tell the story, it was just this massive inconvenience. Everything about it was hard. Having to show, having to take him to different colleges was hard. And the idea that he's going to college out of state was hard. And now, I mean, we're going to have to pay for travel. He's going to have to travel back and forth from there to here. And, you know, I don't like on the holidays, like, and then it, you know, all of these things and I just never thought about this. And what about the meal plan? And it was like, no matter what she said, the other mom was like, oh, I know I was worried about that too, but I have to tell you like, you know, my kid went to college and I was scared, but they're doing so well. They've blossomed and they have the most amazing group of friends. And yeah, I know it's confusing at first, but like they'll figure it out. And it was, it was literally an hour. You could not help but overhear these people talk. Like every, my teenager came up to me later and was like, did you hear that conversation? I'm like, bro, they heard that conversation at the Taekwondo next door. Everybody heard the convo. One mom's trying to assure the other, like, it's all going to work out. It's all going to be fine. I know it's scary, but this is exciting. And the other one, it just was only negative. It was all she could talk about was how negative this experience was. And I tell that story for two reasons. Number one, man, I freaking get it. I get it. I get what it's like to be afraid and have that fear come out of your mouth as negativity because it's easier to be negative about how much the plane tickets home for the holidays are going to cost than it is to admit that you're afraid to admit that your oldest that your baby is about to go away to college and you don't know how it's going to go to admit that this is a whole new phase your family's going into and that feels scary right like in fact in those moments Unless you do some soul searching and some unpacking, you maybe don't even understand that that's what you're feeling. All you focus on is like, oh, what does this mean? And this is going to be hard. And I don't understand. It's so confusing. Why couldn't he go to a school in state? And la, 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 la. You're up here on the surface because on the surface, you're an in-control mama who's pissed about the price of an airline ticket. And down here... You're a mama who's about to send her first baby bird out of the nest. And that's terrifying. That feels out of control. It's like your heart living outside of your body. So it's easier to focus on all the negative things about this experience than it is to come back to this feeling of fear that's really underlying everything else. So that was the first reason I wanted to talk about this is because I wanted to make that distinction for y'all. The second reason I wanted to share this particular story is because I don't doubt for a single moment that this woman loves her son. I know it based on the, the detail that she had, all the things she was so worried about. I don't doubt for a second that this boy isn't her pride and joy. But I'll tell you what, I want every single one of you parents to hear this. If that is the way you are talking about their life, even if you're not talking about it in front of them, 
which I doubt. If that is the way you are talking about their life, they are going to feel it. There is no world where her son does not pick up on the energy that she is adding to this equation, which is either going to make the child feel anxious, unsure. Maybe it makes him feel angry. Maybe it makes him feel bitter. Maybe it makes him feel like, should I not be doing this? Should I not be going away? Should I not be having my own life? Or maybe it makes it so that they go away and don't want to come back because they already feel such negativity surrounding this experience. That woman is unintentionally, I am positive, unintentionally doing the first thing that blocks us from what we want to attract into our life. She's doing the first thing and I think probably the most common thing. What you say matters. What you say matters. What you say becomes your reality. What you say becomes your reality, y'all. Fast forward, different experience. I'm at a sporting event. I'm, I'm sitting, I can hear the other moms talking. And one of them's talking about, I'm so tired. I'm just so tired. I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And by the way, real. All, all these moms, every single mom in this lineup, first of all, we're on a traveling baseball team, which means we're all over Helen, Georgia, taking these kids around, sitting out at a tournament. God bless them. I'm not even going to lie. I do a game. I do a game. I do two hours. I watch a game. And then I go home to three other kids. I know there's a lot of people like pack up the whole family. They make all the kids go. The other three kids do not want to watch baseball. They don't. They occasionally, very rarely, I'm not going to make them sit there. So I go watch the game and then I go home. I, I watch the game. I convince the 16 year old to watch the two younger ones for the two hours while I go watch this game. And then I come back home and I take care of the other three. So these I would say 98% of the parents in this lineup, they don't watch a game. They watch all the game. All the game. They're there, you know, first they say the whole thing. They're rooting. They're cheering. They bring their coolers. They got their snacks. They are in it. They are in it to win it. They drive here. They drive back. They do the things. They're at the party. Some of these, shout out. If any of these women listen to the podcast, you know I love you and respect the hell out of you. There's practice multiple times a week, basically every night. Um, some of the moms sit at the practice. They watch the practice. That is the level of intentionality with their, it's so incredible. Not me. Oh, love this for you. Not me. I can't, no, no, I can't watch baseball practice. No, thank you. Uh, love that. But no, but she's like, I'm so tired. I'm like, hell yeah, you're tired. I'm tired just hearing your schedule. But our words have power. When you talk about anything, even if it's real for you, you are giving power to that truth. I'm so tired. I am just so tired. If you sat there wherever you are right now and you started saying, God, I'm feeling really tired. Like, oh, my neck's kind of hurting. My, You could literally, you could very easily talk yourself into feeling a certain kind of way. And when you begin to feel a certain kind of way, you begin to act a certain kind of way. And it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm not saying that we don't have moments. Of course you have moments where you are tired, but giving voice to that gives power to the thing you don't want to create more of. The alternative is, you know, I'm going to take a minute out and get some rest. I'm really going to honor my body with some rest right now. I'm really going to sit down and just ground myself and take a minute to replenish, take a minute to revive my spirit. I know maybe you're rolling your eyes. I sound a bit cheesy with the way that I talk to myself. You don't have to say that. You'd be like, hey, hey girl, we're going to sit a spell. We're going to sit here for a minute. We're going to, what you know, however you say that. One scenario is you giving power to something you don't want. She's not saying like, oh, I'm so tired, thank God, because I'm ready to go to bed and it's going to be great to fall right asleep. She's saying, I'm so tired. She's, she's lamenting. She's bummed about the fact that she's tired when she's at her kid's game and she wants to have energy. She's drinking a coffee and she's still feeling so tired, but she's giving power to that. So the alternative is, oh, my, this espresso is fantastic. I'm going to stand up and sort of move around a little bit. I'm going to give some energy to my body. My body's really craving some energy right now. They're both the same thing, but they lead you in two completely different directions. This morning, I finished my book. Whew, it was a big deal. Um, my 10th book, 
It was very hard to finish and I'm really proud of myself for getting it done. And I knew I wanted to do this podcast episode for y'all, but I also knew that my brain was kind of mush, like the final chapter of a book, it takes a lot. I And I just, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna go, go outside. I'm gonna put my feet on the ground. If you listen to my episode about things that I do to renew my spirit and connect with my higher power, that's a big one for me is my bare feet on the ground. So I went and sat with my bare feet on the ground and I just took a minute to sort of fill myself back up. Now I did that because I was tired, but I speak into what I want, not necessarily what I'm feeling. And we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk no matter what. So if you're gonna talk, you may as well talk using empowering conversation, using conversation that becomes breadcrumbs that you leave yourself with the direction that you're headed. What you say isn't even necessarily directly tied to trying to attract something into your life, but it is absolutely tied with your vibrational level and what you're putting out into the world. More on that in a minute. So the first thing that is potentially blocking your manifestation is what you say. And the easiest solution here, if you feel like you are potentially accidentally calling things into your life that you don't want to, the easiest thing is just to pay attention to the words that come out of your mouth. We do this all the time. I did it earlier in this episode and I'm leaving it in so that we can have this moment where I catch it. Earlier in the episode, I caught myself saying something that my internal alarm was like, boop, boop. I said, I'm klutzy and I'm clumsy. And I'm like, oh damn, I'm literally doing it right now. Dr. Wayne Dyer has so many incredible books on the law of attraction and manifesting and something he wrote, I can't remember which book, but I absolutely loved it. I am, he said, are divine words. I am are the words of God. So if you listening to this, watching this right now, if you ever use the two words, I am, you better back it up with something badass. You better back it up with something divine. You better back it up with who you want to be. I am klutzy. I am clumsy. I'm just reinforcing that in my own mind. And I've worked through a lot of beliefs that I had about myself, a lot of limiting beliefs that I had about myself just by becoming conscious of when I say I am. So for you, don't ever follow that up unless you want it to be something that's good. So the first way that you're blocking is what you say. The second way that you may be blocking what you're trying to manifest is what you complain about. What you complain about. What you complain about, manifest. Period, period, period. Because ugh, this goes back to manifesting 101. Go listen to that episode. But just catch this for a quick minute. Thought and what we focus on matched with the energy that we focus on it with is the strength of our ability to attract something. Let me say it again. What you focus on paired with the feeling that you have while you focus on that thing, the intensity of the feeling, those two things paired together are what allows us to attract or what attracts into our life. And you're like, wait, no way. Cause like I keep focusing on, I keep meditating on this great thing in my life but I just keep attracting more of what I don't want, right? Because the feeling attached to what you don't want is stronger than the feeling attached to the stuff that you do want. Why? Because the crap that we're afraid of is always going to evoke a stronger feeling in us than, you know, maybe someday I'll meet a nice guy, right? Oh, I want to attract like a nice guy, whatever. That'd be so cool. I'd love to have a partner. La, 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 la. Oh my God, I don't know. I'm going to pay my bills. Oh my, la, 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 Oh wait, I don't have enough money and then the account's overdrawn. Essentially think of it like this. We're telling the universe all the time. We're telling, here's what, here's what we're looking for. Here's what I'd love. This is what I'd love. And we're telling the universe that by what we focus on, by what we think about. The volume of that request is based on how much feeling you have when you focus on it. And I'm gonna dig into that more, but let's just stick with this idea of complaining for a minute. What you complain about 
you add energy to, right? Because you're pissed off or you're bitter or you're annoyed or you get frustrated and you are telling the universe, this, 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 this is what I want. Because whatever you're putting out in the world, it's like, I do not want, let's, let's just, let's pull Destiny's Child into this. They said, no, whoa, scrubs. They said, no scrubs. I don't want no scrubs. A scrub is a guy that can't, scrub is a guy that can't get nothing on me. I can't think of the words right now, but they didn't want a scrub, right? You're over there telling the universe, no scrubs, no thank you. But all you're focusing on is the scrub. If anyone's listening to this, they're like under 25, like what is she talking about? But y'all know, you know if you know, okay? So you're telling the universe, I don't want no scrubs. But you complain to your girlfriends about the boys. You complain to your mama about the boys. You tell everyone that'll listen that you just can't find yourself anybody on this or the only people you attract on this app are losers. You, It's all you focus on is the thing you don't want. And you add energy to it and you keep complaining about it. And so the universe is like, damn, this girl is interested in a scrub. I'm going to send another one her way because this is all she thinks about and she thinks about it with passion. Passion is high energy, but passion isn't always positive. You can passionately hate something, right? So what you complain about, you create. What you complain about, you create more of. And I mean, I think of this like when we go through breakups and, you know, it's super normal to go through a breakup and you're talking to your girlfriends about it. You're processing it with your therapist. You're telling your mama, you're talking to everybody and then this happened and then this happened and this happened. And it doesn't mean that what you've gone through isn't real. It doesn't mean that what you've gone through isn't going to take some time to heal. But it is really important that you are conscious of the energetic ties that you have between yourself and the thing you keep saying you don't want. Because if you don't want something, you let it go, right? I, oh, I really want some wide leg trousers, trying everywhere. I tried Shop Bob. I tried Nordstrom. I have this vision in my head. I want these like wide leg trousers, but I'm also short and I got a booty and it's not necessarily the easiest thing to find wide leg trousers that look great on me. So I just keep trying. Stuff gets shipped to the house. I try it on. It doesn't work. I send it back, right? This is just going to keep trying this thing until I get it. I look in stores, still not finding anything. When it's not for me, I send it back and I never think about the trousers that didn't work. I never think about those pants again. Never. But you, you had that boss two years ago that was a narcissist asshole. And you keep talking about how bad that boss was. You keep telling people how bad that experience was. Or you went through a breakup and your ex-girlfriend was crazy town. And you keep telling every, you're like, oh, well, let me tell you. Oh, you have a bad, let me tell you this. And even when you're not talking to people, you're thinking about it in your own mind. You see someone on a TV show and you're like, well, that reminds me of Amy and she was crazy. And here's all the reason why. And you keep going back. It's like an obsessive compulsive need to keep unpacking this and unearthing it. And all you're doing is attracting it to your life in a greater way, right? Because if it wasn't for you, you would have let it go. You would assume, yeah, those are not my pants. These are not the droids you see. You would have moved on. So what you complain about, you create. Three, what you focus on is blocking your manifestation. What you focus on. This was crucial for me to understand. This was, this is the most freaking A. If you don't get anything else if you don't take anything else away from this, even if you think the whole conversation about law of attraction and manifesting is BS, I mean, honestly, I don't know why you're still here if you think that, but I mean, let's stay open. If you are, this is incredible. Just try this one thing. Just try this one thing out and see if it has any effect on your life. I feel like the easiest way to see what you focus on is the, the freaking determining factor. What you focus on, the vibration that you bring to it is what you call into your life, period. And this shows up for, I think, most of us when it comes to finance. I know what it's like to be wealthy. 
I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to not know how you're going to make rent, to pay for gas with change that you found under the seat. I know what it's like to park around the corner from your house so that your car doesn't get repossessed. I, I know it all. And so I know what the difference is. And I know, have you ever heard that expression, you know, you want to know how to make a million dollars? People are like, yeah, I want to know how to make a million dollars. They're like, okay, you're going to need a million dollars. Essentially, the idea is that if you have a large sum of money, it's easy to make a large sum of money. Part of the reason that also works is because if you had a million dollars, you're not worried about how you are going to pay your rent. People who say, you know, money won't make you happy. Bullshit. Money will pay your bills. Money will cover your kid's tuition, right? That mama who's worried about her kid having to get plane tickets back and forth, that's a fear for her. Clearly, she's thinking, I'm going to be financially responsible for this. And what if I don't have the resources to make this experience what it should be for him, right? Money can give you things that make it so much easier for you to function, to live, to have, you know, your mental health be out of whack. Like that's much easier to do if you know how you're going to be able to pay bills. Lots of people in this country and all over the world have depression and anxiety and very severe mental and emotional health issues and they don't get to take time off to figure it out or unpack it or go to a retreat they gotta go to work they got bills to pay they got babies to take care of so when you don't have something and it feels foundational obviously there's going to be very strong emotions attached to that obviously you know if you look at maslow's hierarchy of need the ability to take care of yourself is ba- the most basic. Am I safe? Do I have shelter? Am I like, can I breathe? Can I eat? Am I okay? And money is a huge piece of that, which means for most of us, there are going to be very strong feelings when it comes to finances. I think if you were raised in a home that had money, if you never listen to people fight and argue about how they were gonna pay for something, if you've never had to worry financially, I would bet that it's actually easier for you to attract more. I sort of wonder if this is the reason why people from wealthy families are able to build wealth. Now, yes, in many circumstances, nepotism is at play. They're like, here's your trust fund, here's the money, go do the thing. But also part of it is I wonder if you never had any fear surrounding this, if you always had access to money, if you always had daddy's money or mommy's money ready to go, if you were a trust fund baby, then in your mind, money is like a faucet that you could turn on and it's just always going to be there for you. If you don't know any other reality, then that is your reality. So your relationship with finances probably Even if you're, I'm not talking about spending, I'm not talking about fiscal responsibility, I'm talking about strictly emotionally, what do you think about finances? Now, I'm going to assume that the number of trust fund babies who listen to my show is very small. This is just my guess. I'm going to guess that most of us did not grow up with a ton of money, that most of us did struggle financially, that most of you also know what it feels like to not be able to pay bills or to be right now in a place where you don't know how you're going to pay your bill. So I love money as an example of the way we feel about something and how we unintentionally create more of the thing we don't want. Let's say you are one of the millions of people that have watched a video on YouTube about how to attract more abundance into your life. You wanna attract more money, you wanna attract more wealth, you wanna attract security, you wanna attract all sorts of things, right? You've watched YouTube videos, you've listened to the meditations, like, I get it. And I actually went on a journey several years ago where I listened to all of those things and watched all of those things because I was like, I just had a hunch that there was something about my relationship with money that wasn't healthy. And I couldn't understand, like it was very layered and all sorts of things and it required not just meditation but also prayer and therapy and a whole lot of unpacking. But the one thing that I was doing that I did not understand until later, when I was younger and I was struggling financially, when I was working to pay off a bunch of debt in my business, when I was doing all of these things, The one thing 
that I didn't understand that I was calling into my life through my focus was obsessing over the debt obsessing now i would do my gratitude every morning i would tap into that feeling of of blessing i would tap into like you know i'm capable of working and taking care of my family and i've had all i've ever needed and like all those things but i would obsess over the debt i was i would pay attention to every penny i would pay it down and when i had this much more i'm gonna and all i thought about was the debt the debt the debt the debt it was like this beat of my heart it was what i lived my life through and i just kept i swear to you in that time period i just kept uncovering more debt and more like all of these things that had been hidden in the business i would be like oh my god we just paid this off and now there's this not i just i swear i was like i don't understand what's happening I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know that I'm doing something wrong. I somehow am calling this into my life. And I told you, I believe that we attract things into our lives. And I was like, I do not want to attract. I just like, Lord Jesus, please just let me pay off what this is and have it be done. I do not want to attract any more of this, but I, in order to stop attracting, I have to understand what I'm doing. And I thought that because every day I was doing abundance meditations that I was going to attract the abundance that I was looking for. No, because remember, I told you what we focus on is what we call in. And the energy that you attach to what you focus on has massive power. And I will tell you right now that I was doing all of these things and going through this abundance process and reading all of these books because my greatest underlying emotion was terror. I was terrified. I was so fear-based. How am I going to take care of my kids? And what am I going to do? And how am I going to take care of these employees? And how am I going to take care of these vendors? And like everything I did was from a place of fear, which by the way, is just, it's emotionally debilitating. It's a horrible state to live inside of. But I thought I was doing the right thing. But all I did was obsess, obsessive, obsess. And I am, I, you will never convince me that I didn't just keep telling the universe, hey, give me more people who need me to pay things. Like, give me more stuff to work through because it's all I thought about. And it's all I thought about with fear in my heart. I woke up in the morning, it was the first thing I thought about. Before I went to bed at night, it was all, I laid there and just was like, oh God, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And really, just as a side note, the thing that shifted, the thing that unblocked, the thing that just changed the entire flow of everything was deliberately only focusing on how blessed I am. I, my meditation, my mantra became, I have always had enough. I will always have enough. There's not one time I'm sitting here right now talking to you. There is not one time in my life where I wasn't taken care of, not one. Where a guardian angel showed up, where God came in the form of a stranger, where I got you know a birthday card from my grandma a month late and then I had 20 bucks that I could use to get some gas. Like every single time something has come through to support me and take care of me. And if that is real, I'm sitting here 40 years old, right? Wearing a beautiful robe that I found. I didn't even have to pay, Alex, I found this in a closet. If I can look at my life and look at 10,000 examples of how I've been protected, supported, inspired, loved on, it might not always have shown up in the exact way I wanted it at that moment, but it has always shown up. And if it has always shown up, then it always will show up. Let me tell you a story about how this manifests in my life today. I, in the last nine months, I have never seen so much evidence of the universe, karma, a divine plan, uh, you know, walk in faith and see that faith come to fruition. I have just experienced unbelievable guidance and it, and it's happening in ways that are so massive. I'm like, I feel like, like a religious, like zealot like if I had you know just discovered like the bible or something like I'm like bored again like come on guys this is the thing but for real I have just been so cared for in the most incredible ways when it comes to finances I'm telling you it happened when I was able to stop obsessing over lack and start focusing on 
abundance and start focusing on, you know, it's all flowing. It's all happening. It's all, I will be guided. I will be taken care of. And I just experienced, <laughs> I gotta tell you guys the story. So, um, you, I think if you're hanging out with me, you know that my ex-husband passed away. I was the executor of his will and like the trustee of the estate. I'll make all the things. We had both done that because we knew that if anything happened to us, the other parent would obviously be the one taking care of the kids. And so we had done that. But um, it's a lot. It's a, I just, I, I want to acknowledge anyone who finds themselves in the midst of something similar. It is so much. It is, it is so much. It is so daunting. And um, one of the things that I knew I was going to have to do was eventually sell his house. And that just felt like, I mean, just feels like the, like a 10,000 pound boulder on my shoulder of there's so much stuff in that house. It's like essentially double everything because the kids had rooms there too, obviously. And then all of the furniture and just a lot of things in that house needed to be fixed or repaired. And so I was just like the work that this is going to take to even get it to the place where I can take it to market. And then I was looking in his neighborhood and at similar homes that were in his neighborhood and it was like they've been on the market for like a year and I just I started to get such bad anxiety I started to feel so daunted of like oh my this is just this is so much and I started to spin out I started to like freak out and then all of a sudden I don't know if this was my inner wisdom I don't know if this is God or a guardian angel. I just heard this knowing. And it said, this is not what we believe. You do not believe this. You believe that God can do anything. You believe that the universe makes up its own plans. You believe that you are not tied to what is true or real for every single other person. I just... I. I, I don't know if this sounds crazy, but I just, I'm like, no, I have so much evidence of being taken care of. And I have to believe that in this moment, when God knows I need it so much that like, I mean, my grandma had that poster on her wall that said the footprints in the sand. And this is the time that God was carrying you. And I'm like, God, I need you to carry me through whatever this is. I don't even know how to deal with this. And so I was like, that's right. This is not how I choose to believe. I choose to believe that if I walk in faith, I will be taken care of. That's what I believe. If I walk in faith, I will be taken care of. And I, I had this little like internal pep talk with myself and I prayed. I was like, you know, thank, thank you for this. Like I, I needed this, whatever. And I finished the thought and I swear, I, I swear on my life, 30 seconds later, 30 seconds later, I had a text message from one of my friends who lives in that town who said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I hope this is not inappropriate, but are you going to sell Dave's house? She said, I have some family who's been trying to move here forever, and I think that house would be perfect. When I tell you that this lined up so beautifully that the people who will be in the house is a family that we know and love. So that we, like the kids get to know that, right? Like their friends literally are the ones who will be there. So we come back to town, like we could go back to that house and we know the people who will be stewards of it when it didn't list it, didn't have a real estate agent, didn't do any. Now you could say that is a coincidence. You could say that's, that's, that's nuts. That was going to happen anyway. You will never convince me. You know, I, I have to say too, I think if I would have heard that years ago, I would have been like, calling bullshit because it's not lucky you know it's not oh you're just like extra blessed or no I really do think that it is when you can get to a place where you have absolute faith that it will work out and because you have absolute faith you literally throw it up you throw it up to the universe you throw it up to God and you're just like yeah whenever you don't put a timeline on it you don't question it you don't make demands you're just like I'm gonna trust but like to your core trust it's freaking crazy how things work out it is it, it blows my mind how things work out and I think I've had so much evidence of this on like really big scale when and if you remember a couple years ago I think right around the time we did the manifesting 101 it might even be in that episode 
I talk about this concept of the $10, like see if you can manifest 10 bucks, the 10 buck challenge. And so many people called in, so many DMs, so many emails, like the response was overwhelming from how many people were like, oh my, I did, you said it and I manifested 10 bucks. You said it, I manifested 20, I manifested 50. And this is some woo woo, but there is no difference. There is literally, there's no difference in the faith that you can find $10 and the faith that you could be guided to sell a house to the right person. It feels like crazy to say that, but I've just, you know, I've just had too many things lately where I'm like, holy crap. And it's not happening because I'm sitting here with a journal going, you know, I'm gonna make $10 million, which like, I love a goal. I love that you call the shot. I love that you tell the universe exactly what you're looking for. Having a very specific idea in mind of what you want to attract really matters. But even more important than what you know you want is you knowing without question that if it is right for you and good for the world at large, then it can happen that fast. Take with that what you will. But that was huge. When I saw that text, like everything in my spirit settled and I was just like, you know, this is, this is unbelievable. And I'm going to tell that story, even if, I don't know, it sounds crazy or it sounds unbelievable or something, because it's the kind of thing where, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff that's happened lately where it would be real easy to be like, God, where are you? And God's like, I am here. Life is still real and life still happens, but I believe that we are guided and I believe we are taken care of. And yeah, that was, that was a big deal. So the fourth thing that might be blocking your manifestation is the action you're taking. Now, this is where my approach to the law of attraction and manifesting is different than a lot of people who are on YouTube or podcasters. A lot of people are sort of like, make a vision board, speak it into existence, wait for the universe to, you know, do the thing. And to be fair, in... <laughs> In the example of the house, like that, I, that was just, that was the freaking miracle. But that notwithstanding, most of the things where I'm like, holy crap, like I've manifested this moment. I know that I set my intention and here I am living out this moment. There was action taken. That's the key is like, people are like, oh, I made the vision board and I'm calling the shot. And where is my thing? You know, I want the partner of my dreams and I made the vision board and I know exactly who they are, but you haven't left your house in six months. You don't go anywhere. You don't do anything. You don't meet anybody. What is the action? What is the inspired action that you are taking to get you closer? You got to meet the universe. You got to meet God halfway. This is a, this is a joint collab. This is a mashup between you and a higher power. What are you doing to meet God halfway? What are you doing? Like, oh, you have this vision that you're going to be this. Okay, well, what did you do today that can get you even a little bit closer to where you want to go? What is the next right move in this moment that can get you closer to that idea? I, I have had that you all have heard me talk about it a million times, but like I have been practicing the guitar on and off for 20 years more with more intentionality over the last year and a half and i had in the last six months really just let my practice of my guitar kind of fall away there's been a lot going on uh so i just hadn't been practicing and i picked it up again and it's so annoying anyone else if you are a guitar player when your calluses go away and then you have to form them again it's so annoying because it hurts that's neither here nor there if i have a vision that someday you and I are going to be sitting around at a party and someone's like, you want to jam? <laughs> I want to believe that's going to happen. But like if I want to be able to play guitar, not just like I'm doing my chords and I know the thing, but like I literally can play guitar. If I want that vision, if I'm trying to manifest that in my life, y'all, I'm going to have to take some action. I'm going to have to, you want to be a photographer, you're going to have to take some freaking photos. You want to be a content creator, you're going to have to put some stuff out on the internet. You want to be a podcaster? You know, so many people look at what other people do and they're like, I want that, but I could never. I want to be, I want to have a podcast like you, Rach, but like, I'm just over here doing my thing. Girl, I have done 
almost 400 episodes, more than that. I've probably done closer to 500, but we only started counting a couple years in. So let's say for sure, over 400 episodes, which is more than 400 hours of this show. Do not compare the vision you have of someone else's life with where you are today. You gotta take some action. I was talking to uh, uh, Megan Good, a couple years ago, and I remember her saying this, that she had always dreamed, she's an actress, and she'd always dreamed of being a superhero. And she really wanted to be a superhero, really wanted to be a superhero, but like wasn't getting asked to audition for that and um, felt really frustrated. And she'd always talk to her husband about how she wanted to have this role. And he was like, well, what are you doing to meet God? And she was like, what? And he was like, what can you do? What can you do to get closer to this thing you wanted to do? And it was a really interesting way that she took it because the only thing she could think of was she could get into superhero shape. She was like, well, I could get, you know, you'll see The Rock over there on Instagram and he's doing his thing and he's getting all. So she's like, well, I could do that. I could get into superhero shape. And so she did. And she was like, Rachel, it was the craziest thing. Like I started on this journey. I started getting into shape. I started training as if I had already been given the role of a superhero. And then she got a call to be a superhero in Shazam, which she is. She was like, it was the wildest thing. Yeah, because you got to show up for the life you're trying to have. And what people get so twisted is you think, You've got to show up at where you will be when you manifest the vision. No, you have to show up by an inch. You have to show up 1% better than you are today. I actually say this to myself a lot. A, I mean, do it for manifesting, but just do it for life. A lot, a lot, a lot. I will ask myself, how can I do 1% more? I did it today. I was working out my arms, which by the way, are looking pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I'm wearing a kimono. You can't see. But later, I'll show you. The gun show, it's doing well. I was working out my arms, and I, how can I do 1% better? And I was like, well, you could do three more. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do three more. So suddenly now, I'm doing 15 instead of 10. Well, that would be five more. But you know what I'm saying. I'll ask myself, okay, how can I be 1% better as a mom right now? Just one. Just 1%. How can I do 1% better? How can I do 1% better in my self-care? How can I do 1% better in this podcast? 1%. And when you ask, you're not, you're not trying to change the world. You're just like, how can I do a teensy tiny bit better than I currently am? Your brain will supply you with all kinds of ideas and then just do one of them. You got to keep moving in the direction of where it is you want to go. I want you to imagine that you're at the starting line of the race and you don't know at what mile in the race your dream is going to run right into you? Oprah said, there is no such thing as luck. There is only preparation meeting opportunity at a moment in time. You don't know at what mile of the race your dream is going to run into you. But I know for a fact that it'll never run into you if you don't cross the starting line. What if the dream is going to run into you at mile six? What if the dream's going to run into at mile 50? It's get, it's there. It's going to be there. The vision that you have is going to be yours, but only if you meet up with it. Your action matters. The vision matters. The energy matters. The vibration matters. All of it matters, but you got to show up. Number five, the fifth reason that you may be unintentionally blocking the manifestation, the energy, the feeling that you are attaching to what you do. I've talked about it a lot in this episode. I talk about it a lot in Manifesting 101, which is episode 227, if you wanna go listen to it. I've talked about it a lot, but it's because it's real. Energy that you bring to something, is it positive feeling? Is it a negative? It's why a gratitude practice is so powerful. It's why starting your day with gratitude work and ending your day with gratitude work is so powerful. It's because gratitude, a state of gratitude, raises your vibration. It brings you up a level. And remember this, when your vibration is higher, it's like the volume is louder on what you are trying to attract into your life. We all know this. You've all gone out in the world and there's like someone who's in the best mood and they're having the best day and it's like all, and you like want to be around their energy. You're literally, it's like a magnet. You're attracted to that energy. The same is true for negative. Negative energy, toxic energy, bitterness, anger, hatred, like those things are a lower vibration. And so the only thing that they're attracting is more 
of themselves. Like attracts like. Like attracts like. Look around your friendship circle. Look at your partner. Look at the people in your life. Look at the job that you have. And ask yourself how your vibrational level has brought you to these experiences. It's a, it's a really hard place when we have to be honest about how we got to this really hard place. But the alternative is you just go through the rest of your life and you keep blaming it on everybody else. You keep blaming it on God. You keep blaming it on the world. You keep blaming it on there's no good men left or all women are gold diggers or, you know, you keep telling yourselves, you keep telling yourself this story and the story serves to keep you stuck, to keep you right here where you are. Or you can tell yourself a different story. You can speak the life that you want to have. You can focus on the things you want, not the things you don't. You can put goodness into the world. You can put energy into the world. You can raise your vibration. You can walk in faith, whatever that looks like to you. You can walk in faith toward this life that you believe can be yours. But if any of these things are off, then it's very possible that one or many of them are why you can't seem to attract the thing that you want to attract. I hope that that was helpful. And if it was helpful, guys, please like this video, like this episode, subscribe to the channel so you never miss a conversation with us hanging out, or you can go one step further and share this with your community, share this with a friend that you think would dig it. Um, I feel like if more people understood this, if, if we were able to raise the next generation understanding that they have control over what they attract into their sphere, I really think it could change the consciousness of the next generation, but also um, just the way everything feels. It's funny how, you know, when I was younger, especially younger in my career, I had all these ideas about how much money I would need to have to feel safe or how much success I would need to have to be secure or how many followers on social media or how many listeners of the show. And I just I understand now in a way that I never did that I have everything I'm ever going to need. And it's really, it's so cool. Like, you know, the show is a beautiful example. When I stop focusing on growing the podcast audience and I just focused on how lucky I am to do this work and that I can't believe that people care about what I'm saying. When I just tried to do a really good job and put out really good content and, and show up for you guys well, when I just did that, the show exploded. And every month, honestly, we keep being like, what? Is and every once in a while, like an old version of me is like, oh, let's grow this. Let's focus. Let's put gasoline. Let's go great. And I'm like, no, no, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing because I will be taken care of. Even if it goes down and it's just like 10 people again and three of them are related to me. I have to trust that if I'm here and if you're there, that we're being taken care of. And when you can tap into that truth, when that becomes your truth, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, it's pretty wild what you can call in. And the flip of this, which I've read about in everybody's book, and I used to roll my eyes at it, but it is very true, is that when you actually understand the vibration to be at to manifest, you no longer are really trying to manifest, right? You think like, oh, if I could just get to this place, then, you know, I'll have like the keys to the kingdom and I'll be able to call into anything in my life. And, um... Yeah, resting in faith looks like I got some goals, I've got some dreams, I got some things, and I'm like, that'd be really cool. I'm not hustling for anything anymore. I have everything I've ever needed right here. And so do you. I had to learn this stuff before I could get to that place. So I hope that something I said today will help you on your journey. I'm Rach. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being my friend. I appreciate how you show up in your life and your world and how you lead others and lead yourself. I'll be back soon with more conversation. And until then, remember, I love you and I'm rooting for you. Our minds are the most powerful thing in the whole of our being. They're so powerful. Your mind is so powerful. 